Dear Bethesda, I know, you're probably sick of my letters flooding your mailroom by now. Look, I just needed to tell you about your laser rifles. I don't, like, think your game is bad because of it. I think it's bad because of the settlement system. Nah, I'm just messing with you. Seriously, I don't expect you to think of everything. I mean, even though it's totally absurd that laser rifles have recoil, I mean, everyone knows that light doesn't have mass, right? Every, everyone, everyone knows that? Anyway, I'm over it now. Thanks for entertaining me. Besides, laser weapons are all right and all, but I've moved on. I have to agree with my friend Psycho Angel here and say that laser rifles? Pfft, who wants some flimsy, ineffectual flashlights? But plasma weapons? Now there's a weapon for a badass wastelander. Slow firing, slow moving death machines. And when it hits stuff? None of this fucking wimpy, no kinetic energy transferred shit. Hell no, I'm blasting you with blinding hot plasma. Plasma has mass, motherfucker. Do you feel it, you piece of shit? Melt, assholes! All of you melt! <laughs> Wait a second. Oh, shit. Oh no, oh no, and we, we just made up. <sighs> All right, that, I'm sorry, but I have to do this. Bethesda, your plasma weapons make no fucking sense. Well, actually that may not be entirely true, but I have to know, do they make sense? First, let's go over what plasma is, since I did a um, uh, somewhat questionable job describing it in my laser rifle video. I was right when I said that plasma is one of the four fundamental states of matter after solids, liquids, and gases, and it is by far the most plentiful in our universe. Every star is made out of it, and there are a lot of stars. But what is plasma? Well, plasma can be created in one of two ways, either by heating a gas or subjecting it to a really strong electromagnetic magnetic field. This either increases or decreases the number of charged particles it has, also known as ions. A high level of heat or continued presence of electromagnetism is necessary in order to maintain this state. Otherwise, the plasma eventually returns to an inert gas. That's why there's a lot of plasma in the sun. It's hot as fuck. Science! Plasma behaves a lot like a gas in how it fills up space, though. So, like, shouldn't plasma just kind of disperse like a wet fart as soon as it exits the barrel of the rifle? Well, that's what I thought, too, until I saw that University of Missouri engineer Randy Curry and his team were able to fire self-contained rings of plasma as far as two feet in their lab. The plasma doesn't emit any radiation or heat. You can stand right in the room with it. Curry was able to do this by giving the plasma a way to create and maintain its own magnetic field. Holy shit, this, this this whole thing was gonna be about how plasma rifles could never exist and now like some dude in Missouri is fucking making one. Sure, it can only fire like two feet now, but who knows what will be possible decades from now. Ha! But I'm not done yet, not by a fucking long shot, because you know what? We're not just talking about the feasibility of plasma being lobbed over a distance. Look at this shit, it just melts people into nothing, fucking just vaporizes their asses. Jesus Christ, this is awesome, just, just look at it. But is this even possible? You probably think that this is a question without an answer, don't you, Bethesda? Look at you, Todd Howard, sitting there all smug with that smug smugness and that sexy hair and deep brown eyes. But you'd be wrong, haha, <laughs> suckers. Thankfully for me, people with science degrees and government grants at the University of Leicester are apparently mad scientists in training and did the math. You don't believe me? Well, they did. I even checked their numbers myself. For time's sake, I'll spare you their methodology, but you should check their papers out. Links in a doobly-doo. They figured out that it takes 2 billion and 990 million joules, or 2.9 gigajoules of energy to vaporize a human. Uh, joules are just a measurement of energy. Uh, maybe it's better to think of it like power, which is energy over time. Watts, for instance, are joules per second. So 2.99 gigajoules is roughly equivalent to 2.99 gigawatts, or the amount of power that the average American home would use in just 273 years. Or, for the explosive inclined, about three quarters of a ton of TNT. Holy shit, that's a lot of energy, all delivered in what looks like a second. But it gets worse than that, because you know, plasma rifles, they don't just turn humans into vaporized goo puddles, no, they melt shit, just about everything, from rad roaches to robots to fucking super mutant behemoths. Wait, so 
How much energy does it take to melt a super mutant behemoth? I mean, if I determine a super mutant behemoth as being roughly seven times the mass of the average human with an infallibly scientific measuring technique, they clock in at roughly 542 kilograms, or about half a ton. And going with 70% water, 15% skeleton, and 15% soft tissue, since super mutant physiology is based off of human, molar mass of molecules, 131,100 calories of meat, all in a balanced breakfast, and then add them all together, holy shit, holy shit, it takes 20 billion, 600 million joules, or 20.6 gigajoules to melt a super mutant into a liquid pile of green shit in under a second. The largest capacity power plant on the planet is the Three Gorges Dam in China. It outputs 22.5 gigawatts. So basically melting a super mutant behemoth down into goo takes about the same output as this huge fucking dam. Jesus Christ. The energy in plasma is mostly heat. I mean, it's not kinetic. And look at it, it moves slow as hell. That means all the damage it's doing is from transferring heat into whatever it's hitting. So how hot does this plasma have to be in order to deliver the same energy as the largest power plant in the world, but in the size of a tiny little ball of gas? Thankfully, if you know a little thermodynamics, this isn't impossible to figure out. Using G equals MC delta T, where G is energy in joules, M is mass, C is specific heat, which is the amount of energy it takes to heat one gram of a specific material one degree Kelvin, and delta T is change in temperature. And that's the thing we want. For our gas, we're gonna use hydrogen because it is by far the most efficient element to turn into a plasma, and it has the most amount of energy with the least amount of heat and mass. Choosing the right mass was tricky. So on one hand, the more hydrogen you have, the less you have to heat it in order for it to have the same amount of energy. The problem is that each plasma cartridge holds at least 12 shots of plasma, meaning that if one round of hydrogen plasma is one kilogram, that means that the cartridge has to have 12 kilograms of hydrogen compressed into it, which both stretches the believability of the device, but also would make each cartridge a whopping 26 pounds. So let's say instead that each shot of plasma is 250 grams, which makes each plasma cartridge a still quite heavy, but still believable six pounds. How hot would our little 250 gram plasma bolt need to be in order to deliver 20 billion 600 million joules of super mutant behemoth soup making energy? Well, if you plug everything in, it turns out it's a balmy 5,762,237 degrees Kelvin. Now, how does that? Well, honestly, not impossibly hot, thankfully. The writer in me wants to say it's 993 times hotter than the surface of the sun, but the surface of the sun isn't that hot, relatively speaking. Our little ball of superheated plasma is somewhere between the radiative zone and the core in temperature. And when it hits our super mutant behemoth, it's delivering the same amount of energy that's in nearly five tons of TNT. And you know, even in a perfect transfer of energy, which is impossible, if you're firing this thing at anything smaller than a super mutant, like a human or God forbid a rad roach, it's going to disperse all of that extra energy once it's done melting the target by expanding its supersonic speeds and fusing with surrounding atmospheric molecules and sending out bursts of deadly radiation, melting the face off of anything that's nearby, including yours. Luckily, this would likely happen at fractions of the speed of light, so you would probably be dust before you could feel anything. This thing should be destroying a city block every time it's fired. Jesus fucking Christ. Every time you fire this thing, it's like scooping out a clump of hydrogen from the middle of the sun and slinging it at enemies. Not to mention that it would take the largest power plant in our history in order to get the hydrogen plasma hot enough to begin with. Ain't no way microfusion technology is that good. That's some bending the laws of the universe shit. Actually, at this point, it's more believable that instead of creating plasma, the rifle is actually opening a dimensional rift into the center of the sun and scooping out what it needs and hurling at our enemies using magic slingshots. So, you know, think about that next time you're using the plasma rifle. You're not firing flimsy energy blasts. You're defying the laws of reality and hurling chunks of the sun at your enemies like a god from Greek myth. You're immortal, motherfucker! Just, you know, try not to miss. Sincerely, Austin. B.S. What? I don't really swear that much, do I? Holy shit, fucking shit, motherfucker, piece of shit, assholes, fucking, fucking shit, fucking fuck, shit, fucking shit, fucking shit, holy shit, shit, fucking Jesus, fucking Christ, motherfucker, shit. Thank you everyone for watching my video! How'd you like it?
It's a little different than some previous ones I've done, isn't it? For those of you who are curious, it's heavily, heavily inspired by the What If blog by Randall Munro, uh, the guy who makes XKCD comic. If you haven't seen it, you should go read it. It's freaking cool, man. Uh, links in the description. Also, link in the description for all the math I did this episode if you want to check my work or maybe fiddle with the numbers a little bit and kind of make your own custom plasma blast radius death bomb thing are there any weird game physics science questions that you might have for any franchise it doesn't have to be fallout it can be mass effect i have my eye on mass effect in fact um are there i want to take your questions and answer them i want to take your your weird weird hypotheticals and explore them using actual science because i love learning new math and stuff and i like explaining it to y'all so you know and if you like this video, you should share it, because I want this format to succeed. Because if you really, you know, you hate my letter series as it was, you don't want to hear about Geralt's dick anymore. If you don't want to hear about any more dicks, you should definitely share this video with your friends, because if it's successful, I'll stick to this formula. Otherwise, I'll go do something else, like, um, I don't know, make a bunch of fart noises in the microphone. If you really like the show and you want to help support it, you can head over to our Patreon page and, you know, contribute whatever you can, if you can. And if you can't, just watching it and subscribing to our channel is super helpful. Also, a thank you to those of you who do contribute. You make this show possible, and you are awesome. And I'm going to go do some stuff now. Science!